Hi friends, welcome back to Circle Time. My name is Miss Kaya and today we're gonna talk all about the outdoors. Does it look like I'm outdoors? I have all of my plants here. I've got another plant over here and I have my outdoor hat on. Isn't this so crazy? It's like I'm outside, but I'm actually inside in my house. Okay, so for today's circle time, we are going to start off with our big stretch. I like to do this in the morning because it wakes up our body. We're gonna practice our letters and numbers. We're gonna read our poem behind me, and then we're gonna finish off with our goodbye song. Oh, and our science experiment. I have a really interesting science experiment today that I almost forgot about. So we're gonna do that today. So let's start off, hmm, let's start off showing our crazy socks. I wore some crazy socks today. These ones are my favorite because they have donuts on them. Look at that, they're pink and blue and they have donuts with sprinkles on them. Those are my crazy socks. Okay. Love your crazy socks. Let's do our big morning stretch. Are you ready? Okay, remember for this, if there's someone behind you or furniture behind you, just take a step forward. You can do this on the ground or standing up. Make sure if you go like this that you're not touching anything. No furniture, no friends, no walls. You want to make sure there's lots of space around you, okay? I'm just going to move my plants over a little so I have a little bit more room. Okay, ready? You can sit down like me or you can stand up. We are going to do our big morning stretch, hands up over our heads. My hat's kind of getting in the way. Hands up over our heads to the sky. Good job, make sure your back is nice and straight. Good job. And then we're gonna take our arms and put them together like this to create a diamond over our head. Do you see my diamond? All right, we're gonna lean to the right, just like a kite. That rhymes. Leaning over, being gentle with our body. Good job. You should feel this stretch in your back and in your sides. We're gonna go back up and lean to the left. Lean left. Good job. Okay, now for this one, I'm just gonna scoot a little bit forward so that nothing is behind me. You can do the same. This is our waterfall. So we put our arms up over our heads and we lean back very gently with our head looking up to the ceiling. Good job. All right. Then after our waterfall, we are going to do our butterfly. For the butterfly, you need to be on the ground for this one. So have a seat where you are and we're gonna take our feet and we're gonna make them kiss. Just like that. Now I can see everyone's silly socks. All right, so we have our feet together and we're gonna put them down on the ground. And I have my knees that are gonna be my butterfly wings. And we're gonna flap them up and down very gently. Nice job, friends. Amazing butterflies. Okay, our butterflies' wings have stopped flapping. We're gonna Push your knees, boop. So now I should be able to see your toes. Hello. And we're gonna do our toe touch. So sitting on the ground, we're gonna take our arms up and touch our toes. Reach for those silly socks. Good job. Oh, this stretch feels so nice to me. Especially if we've been sitting in lots, this is a really, really good stretch to do. Amazing. I've noticed I've been able to go a little bit farther this week too, have you? Can you reach your hands past your toes? Amazing. Okay, we're gonna sit crisscross, boop, and we're gonna do our breathing. So for this, you can imagine you have a cake or cupcakes or your favorite dessert or your favorite dinner or your favorite treat in front of you. I like to imagine there's a big cake in front of me, but you know what? This week, I've been really wanting to eat some spaghetti. So I'm gonna pretend there's a big plate of spaghetti and meatballs in front of me. And on my bowl of spaghetti and meatballs, I'm gonna put a candle, just one right in my meatball. 
That's so silly, right? We don't put candles in our, our spaghetti, do we? Okay, I have my big bowl of spaghetti and I'm gonna breathe it in and smell those tomatoes. Ready? Breathe in and I'm gonna blow up my candle. Good job, let's do it one more time. Ready, breathe in and blow out your candle. Amazing. Can everyone show me your smiles? Good job. Okay, we did our big morning stretch. We saw our silly socks. Let's practice our letters and numbers. Okay, we've been working our way through the alphabet. We started with A, then B, C, D, E. Hmm, what comes after E? Should we find out? Okay, I'm gonna come close to the screen so my friends can see my letters. Okay, we started with the letter A. A sounds like ah, ah, ah. Can you say ah, ah, ah? Good job. Let's see what our animal was. A for alligator, ah, ah, alligator. Then we had the letter B. B sounds like b, b, b. B for bear, b, b, bear. B is for bear. Then we had the letter C. C was a bit different because it sounds like k, k, k. Sometimes it sounds like s, 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 but most of the time, it sounds like ka ka cow. C is for cow. Then we had the letter D. D, D, D. D for dog. D, D, dog. All right, friends. Then last week we had the letter E. A, uh, A. Uh, uh. E is for elephant, ah, uh, ah, uh, elephant. Now, this week we have the letter, hmm, F. What does F sound like? F, F, F. F is for frog, F, F, frog. Good job, friends. That's what the letter F sounds like. We're gonna put our letter of the week on our board. And then let's get into our numbers. Okay, ready to count with me? We have the number one. One flamingo. We have the number two. Two rhinos, one, two. We have the number three. Three turtles, one, two, three. We had the number four. Four peacocks, one, two, three, four. Then we had the number Five. Five snails. One, two, three, four, five. Five snails. This week we have the number six. To do six, I need two hands to show you what that looks like. Six. Or you could do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what animal we had for six. <gasps> snakes, slithery, slithery snakes, so cool. Should we count them? One, two, three, four, five, six snakes. That's a bit of a tongue twister, six snakes, six snakes, six snakes. Whew. 
Okay, I'm gonna put my number six up here so I know what it looks like. Let's count our cubes. Ready to count with me? We're gonna start from the beginning with the number one and make our way up to the number six. One, one red cube. Two, two orange cubes. One, two. Three, three yellow cubes. One, two, three. Four, four green cubes. One, two, three, four. Five, five blue cubes. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do six. Six, what color are they gonna be? Green. One, two, three, four, five, six. Amazing. So this is what the number six looks like and this is what it looks like in our cubes. Okay, friends. Should we do our poem action song? Okay, I've got my orange pointer today. Oops. I've got my orange pointer and this poem is called Maytime Magic. Why did I call it Maytime Magic? Is it the month of May? It is. This is the month of May that we're in right now. And lots of things happen in May outside. We start to see flowers, we get a little bit more rain, and we see spring and birds happening and plants growing and trees getting their flowers and their blooms back. So much happen, it's like magic. Okay, we'll go through the poem first and I'll show you some of the, some of the actions I created to go with it and you can practice with me. Okay, Maytime magic. A little seed for me to sow. What does sow mean? Do you know? Hmm. It can mean to sow like clothes, but it also means to put a seed in the ground and make it grow to like create a hole in soil. That's a new word. A little earth to make it grow. A little hole, a little pat, a little wish, and that is that. A little sun, a little shower, a little while, and then a flower. Okay, friends, should we do the actions? I'm gonna put my pointer down and I'll show you the actions to the song. May time magic. A little seed for me to sow. A little earth to make it grow. A little hole, a little pat, a little wish, and that is that. A little sun, a little shower, a little while, and then a flower. So your face is the flower. Good job, friends. We'll do it one more time together, okay? May time magic. A little seed for me to sow a little earth to make it grow, a little hole, a little pat, a little wish, and that is that, a little sun, a little shower, a little while, and then a flower. Good job, friends. I like that poem a lot. That's all about Flowers growing. What do flowers need to grow? Do you know? Hmm. Well, this poem says that need, they need sun. They need a shower like a rain shower. They need a hole to grow in. And you gotta pat it down to make sure no birds or wind gets the seed so it can have a chance to grow. That's what flowers need to grow. We need some of that stuff too, don't we? We need water to grow. We need sun, that always helps. We need a shower, like the rain showers. We need rain sometimes, because it's fun to play in, and water. We need room, so a hole. We need lots of room to grow and to stretch our bodies. So we're kind of like flowers too, to grow. That's pretty interesting to think about. 
okay friends, should we do our science experiment today? Okay, I did a little bit of a different science experiment. It's a little bit like art and I'll show you what I mean. So I went around my house and I looked at all of my plants and my flowers and I decided to trace them with paper and pencil crayons. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna lift my camera up a little bit. There we go. And look at what I did. I'm gonna come close so my friends can see. I took some pencil crayons and I went over the leaves and traced them and you can actually see the pattern of all the leaves. Here's one here, there's a circle leaf I found, there's this leaf I found, this one here was really cool. This one was almost like snake skin, isn't that so cool? And then I decided to get crazy and I found some letters and numbers around my house. So I found the number two and the letter T. So I use pencil crayons or you can use crayons and I went around my house and I traced over them. So I'll show you exactly what I did and maybe at home you can try it too because it turns out really, really cool. If you do this, you can do it on like a nature walk. If you go out for a nature walk in your neighborhood with your, with your family and you can start to pick up things like leaves on the ground or even rocks and you can take paper with you and you can draw over it. So I'll show you how I did it. Let's move my camera back down. There we go. So I'm gonna use my plant, but make sure when you're doing this, if you're walking around your neighborhood, that you find things that are already on the ground because you don't wanna take things that are alive and growing because that might hurt them if you cut from them. So I'm gonna take just a little bit from my plant and I'm okay with this, this is my plant. So if you're doing something in your neighborhood and you come across your neighbor's plant, if you're able to ask them, maybe ask them if it's okay, if you can take a leaf from their tree or like a leaf from their garden or something because you don't, you don't wanna do that and hurt their feelings if you take something from them, right? So we wanna ask them first if we can. Okay, I'm gonna take this little bit of leaf, I gave it a little haircut. And if we look at it close, we can see it has different bumps on it. And it's like 3D almost, it's like bumpy, it's so cool. So I took a little bit of leaf, and this might be hard to show my friends if I'm holding it up, but you wanna make sure you do this on a hard surface too. So I'll take one of my books, and I'm gonna put the leaf down, and I'll put my paper on top. And I'm gonna take my crayon or pencil crayon or pastel. Lots of things will work, but not, not paint. Let's not try paint. So we're gonna take that and I'm gonna feel for my leaf underneath the paper. And then I'm gonna color on top. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that. Do, do you see that, friends? It's starting to show the texture of the leaf I just cut off. That's so cool. Let's see where it goes to. There we go. That's so cool. So then I can see the texture of the leaf underneath that I just had. Look at that, that's so cool. There's the leaf I had. And that's what it looks like on top. So you can try that at home. Maybe go on a nature walk or see what's in your backyard. And the bumpier an object is, the better. So like I said, I found this snake skin in my home. It wasn't real snake skin, of course, but I found a snake skin and I rubbed it and that's what came out, like a really cool texture. So this is a really great activity that you can do when you're going on a walk or even in your backyard, or you can even do it in your own home like I did. I didn't even have to leave my home. I just found cool bumpy objects around my home. That was so cool. Okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed Circle Time today. Should we do our goodbye song? Okay. Let's see if we remember our goodbye song. Are you ready? Okay. See you later, alligator. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, goldfish. Bye-bye, butterfly. Be sweet, parakeet. See you soon, raccoon. Oh, that one's silly because it moves my hat. Should we do it again? Okay. See you later, alligator. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, goldfish. 
Bye bye butterfly. Be sweet parakeet. See you soon raccoon. Bye friends. Have a great day. Get outdoors and go explore and I will see you very soon. Bye.